Hi everyone, Professor Bingham here, and what we're going to do in this video is go over the essay one prompt. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and we're going to take a look at what we're doing for essay number one. Okay, so let's start up at the top. All right, so the title of this essay is Analyzing the Story of Your Education and Motivation and Getting Out of That Cage. So um, as I explained earlier, when, when you first started this class, it's kind of based on a theme and our theme over the storytelling. And so for the very first essay, we're gonna be telling the story of ourselves in our education. So let's go through this prompt and I'll break it down for you all so that you understand exactly what you're supposed to be doing for this essay. So um, in my essay prompt, I'm always gonna give you a little um, summary of what we're, what and what kind of skills we're looking to develop in this essay and what skills I'm looking for you to be able to demonstrate. Okay, so if we take a look at um, what we're working on in this unit, so we're gonna be practicing college level academic writing skills, including proofreading for errors and using different sentence types, right? So trying to write at the college level and trying to add some complexity into our language. Um, and that will be something that we work on over the entire semester. So don't panic and think I'm expecting perfection from you. I'm not, okay? Um, point number two is we're looking to critically analyze and evaluate readings for stated and underlying meaning, right? So in this essay, we're gonna be choosing one of the readings from um, this unit and you're gonna be writing about and making connections over to that reading, which we have to demonstrate that you understood the reading. Uh, number three, identify main ideas and supporting details in a reading assignment, which again, you're gonna be doing because one part of this for you to um, actually summarize. So you will be doing that, right? You're gonna be identifying the main and supporting ideas through your summary. Um, and to do that, we're gonna be using, right, which you have already done, different reading strategies, and as a drafting process, you're also going to be using different writing strategies from pre-writing all the way through to revising and editing. Um, so what we're gonna be doing as we enter the drafting stage is we're also gonna be trying to apply feedback from peers and the instructor and tutors as you continue to develop your writing. Um, and we'll worry about this page uh, number. Like I said, don't, don't start panicking about those kinds of things. We'll get into that. But for this essay, there's also two key things that we're looking to do in this, in this very first essay. The first one is to effectively summarize the concept from the text for your readers who have not read the text. And as we were saying, that's why we're gonna summarize for them. Okay, so that's a key thing that you have to demonstrate to me in this essay is your ability to summarize one of those readings for an audience who has not read that article or that story or that. Uh, number two, choose specific examples from your personal experience as a student and discuss how those examples illustrate how your chosen topic has impacted your motivation as a student, All right? And so we'll get into that, right, um, with like significance of grit. Let's say you really connected to that. You really want to write about that. Um, what number two means is that you're going to choose specific examples from your educational past or work past. Um, and explain to me how being gritty or not being gritty influenced or impacted your learning and your motivation, okay? So you have all the texts that we read this semester so far to choose, and I want you to choose, please only one, choose one text here. Um, so you can choose the significance of grit, grit, brainology, which is what a lot of people choose. They really like that one. Habits of mind, chapter five on of drive, which is about math. Um, the laziness doesn't exist article, which I think is fantastic. It can really work for this essay as well. How teachers make children hate reading, and I just want to be average by Mike Rose, right? So let's really look at the prompt, and then we'll go back and discuss how um, you would discuss those, those readings in this essay. Um, so for this assignment, we have read about several traits and concepts that can influence slash motivate how students perform in the classroom. Grit, fixed and growth mindset, habits of mind, mastery, unseen barriers, why some people dislike school, and how students float to the mark teacher set. For this assignment, I would like you to choose one of these traits, concepts, or ideas and explain it for your readers by using information from the text that explains this trait or concept or idea and discuss how that trait, concept, or idea has impacted your view of yourself, your performance, and your motivation as a student or runner in general. 
Okay, make sure your essay aligns with the following guidelines. So now these are the has to do, must do things in your essay. You must explain your chosen trade to your readers who have not been in this class and have not read this text, okay? So you're gonna pretend like you're not writing for me. Pretend like you're trying to explain this to a friend or family member and they've never read about Brit, they've never read Brainology, they've never read chapter five, they've never read any of this stuff. So whichever reading you choose, it's gonna be your job to explain that concept before you start uh, you know, examples of how that concept has impacted you as a student or learner, okay? So getting back into the prompts, this means that you'll need to spend some time summarizing key ideas, defining any terms that might be unfamiliar, like fixed and growth mindset, you would need to explain to your audience what those are, and choosing short quotations from the text to help your reader get a sense of what the author is talking about. Now, I would say at least at least two quotations directly from your article or chapter um, to weave into your summary or to weave into those body paragraphs where you talk about yourself and your own experiences. Your summary of the concepts can be a paragraph that precedes that comes before your own educational experience paragraph. Or if you feel really comfortable and, and you like to kind of bend the rules uh, and you want to weave your summary throughout those body paragraphs, you can. Um, the, the first way, the summary first and then doing your three experiences is a little bit easier and kind of follows a, a, you know, a particular pattern. Um, but like I said, if you feel comfortable and you like to experiment and you like writing, uh, feel free to choose that section. Second off throughout your experience paragraphs, okay? But you wanna make sure that you're fully explaining, fully summarizing that article or that chapter or that essay for your audience, okay? So number two, choose at least two specific in incidents in history, meaning they must be academic to illustrate the impact of this trait, concept, ideas on your motivation as a student, and choose one specific incident of learning that falls outside of academic learning. So um, I would like two examples to be from school, right? And it can go all the way back to elementary school, middle school, high school, um, and then one experience of you learning that's non-academic. So like hobby, learning to skateboard, or learning to cook, or learning to knit, or learning to play the guitar, whatever it is. Right? What's the learning experience that you had that wasn't related to school? Now, if you've been out of school for a while um, and you're just coming back to school, feel free to um, let me know and you can write about work or you can write about um, those other learning experiences that you've had. Okay, It doesn't have to be about school if you've been, like I said, out of school for quite some time. Okay, I would prefer to have academic experiences but I understand that might not be easy for you to write about. So we can work with um, you know, the learning experiences that you have had most recently. Um, but like I said, if you're right out of school or you in high school just a couple of years, I would prefer for you to have those two um, academic experiences. And then that third one can be hobby or sport or, or something else that you're interested in, okay? Um, and then the conclusion, notice it says right here, third bullet point, please close. So conclusion, I'm telling you exactly what I want in the conclusion here. And I actually already had you guys practice that with um, one of the, the, the blogger journals, I don't remember which one right now, where I asked you, how can you develop right in this particular class? Um, so consider that journal um, and, and the summary. If you've already summarized, let's say you choose brainology, you've already written the summary, right? You can use that summary in your essay. That's why I had you guys do those time, kinds of things. Okay, so conclusion, please bring me up to the present. How do you think you can use or develop this trade or concept or idea? And how are you going to develop your motivation as a learner slash student overall? Okay, so that means you're gonna be talking about my class and I want you to give me specific examples. So if you choose to write about grit in that conclusion paragraph, I want you to explain to me specific things you are going to do in my class to try to remain gritty right, to try to remain committed and passionate about your goals and your objectives in my class. Um, and same thing with any other reading. Let's say you choose brainology um, and you're, you're gonna write about how you're gonna maintain and try to develop and build that mindset in my class. And I want specific things. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna go to tutoring? Are you gonna try to make it to my office hours? Are you gonna text me or email me anytime you have a question or, or you need help? Right, I want specific actions that you think you can take. Are you blocking out your time, making yourself a schedule? Give me specific things 
that you think you're, you're going to be doing in order to develop grit or growth mindset or mastery or any of those things that we've talked about, right? Um, and then the last point here is to give me as full and detailed an essay as possible. The essay should be five full pages. Don't panic, okay? I know that sounds like a lot, but keep in mind, we have the intro and the conclusion, and you guys are writing a summary. You have to summarize that article, and your summary I'm looking for about um, three quarters to a full page of summary from that article. So by the time you walk, knock out um, your summary and the intro and conclusion, you usually take about a page together. That's two pages down. Really, you're only writing about yourself for three pages, okay? Um, so don't panic. And like I said, as, as you start writing, you'll see the ideas starting to come out. And I don't want you guys to focus on, on page numbers or, or words. We're just going to focus on getting the ideas down on the paper and start developing those. And then we can worry about adding in and trying to develop more to get you to the page requirement. Okay, but don't start panicking yourself and focusing on the pages. Right? I want you to focus on the ideas and you communicating to me your experience with grit or with growth, fixing growth mindset or with mastery or with being accused of being lazy, right? Um, so your final draft is gonna be due on Canvas on Monday, March 22nd by 11.59 p.m. All right, um, and like all the other assignments in my class, if, if you're struggling with that deadline, if you know ahead of time something's come up over the weekend or, or you know, whatever the case may be, try to reach out to me, please, and let me know what's going on so that we can find a, 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 an, another deadline for you, okay? I am willing to work with you guys on deadlines. I prefer to have the essay in on time, but as you guys know, I understand, um, and we can, we can work on that deadline if, if you need me to accommodate that, okay? Um, I do have the assignment sheet, this exact prompt, um, in a Google Doc here, and you can see the rubric, how I'm gonna be grading you, um, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we start getting into drafting the essay. But I wanna talk a little bit about how you write about yourself for this essay, right? Um, so let's say, like I said, you chose the significance of grit, um, and you wanna write about that, and you wanna connect it to your educational past, educational experience, um, you would choose examples of a time you were gritty or, or you weren't gritty. And you can give me um, two examples of being gritty, one example of not being gritty. They can all three be gritty experiences or all three be not gritty. So any, any way you want to structure that, you, you can structure it that way. Um, so right, grit is pretty straightforward. Have you had an experience where you really stuck to something and you tried really hard and it paid off? Or have you had a time where you just couldn't put in the grit, you just you know, kind of gave up on yourself and gave up on the challenge? Um, and I would like to know what that experience was like when you had grit and when you didn't have grit. Um, same thing with brainology. I would like to know um, how a growth mindset has impacted you, if you've had a growth mindset in cer certain subjects, um, or how a fixed mindset has impacted you, um, like for me. I always had a, and we'll talk about that when I show you guys how to do the uh, graphic organizer. Um, or you can do a combination, right? Compare times you've had the fixed mindset to times you had the growth mindset. So again, that combination, any way you want to work it. For habits of mind, I would prefer if you picked one of those eight habits of mind, not pick three and try to do the traditional five paragraph essay. Pick one and really focus on that one, like responsibility, right? Explain to me um, times where you were responsible in your educational path or work or whatever it was, right? and times when you weren't responsible and, or what happened, right? And the same thing with persistence or engagement, right? Choose any of, of those eight habits of mind. And like I said, I'd prefer if you stuck to one. I really want this essay to focus on kind of one core idea. With brainology, you can talk about fixed and growth mindset because they're, you know, two, two sides of the same coin. Um, but with the habits of mind, each of those eight things are separate from, from one another, okay? Um, chapter five is about mastery, right? And so for that one, you know, I would break it down to talk about how, um, you know, it's a, it's a pain, it's a mindset, it's an asymptote, and give me examples of where you were really trying to strive for mastery or times where you just kind of gave up on yourself, similar to the grit thing. Um, the laziness doesn't exist. This is one where um, I would think you would want to focus on kind of all the examples where um, teachers or parents or coaches or whoever it was just thought you were being lazy, but there was really something going on there. And a lot of times that's teachers, right? The teachers have said, oh, so-and-so is just so smart, but they're lazy. They won't do the work. Well, the teacher didn't know what was going on in your life. Um, so that 
would be a way to kind of look at that and to explain to me how teachers and coaches and other people have misinterpreted the circumstances that were going on in your life and how you felt about yourself and how you felt about your education and how they perceived that to be laziness, but you were really struggling with other things. And you can give me those three examples of how that, um, how that shaped your, your education and your motivation. And then of course, the same thing with how teachers make children hate reading. You can talk about how school has been a place of danger for you if you've ever had um, teachers who just kind of made you feel stupid or ridiculous or embarrassed you, or you could flip that, right? And you could say, you know, for you, school was a safe place and you had teachers who didn't try to kill the joy of learning, who instead really tried to keep you engaged and who tried to do some things and who also let you guys read for fun or do cool and exciting projects, right? You can go um, positive or negative on that one too. Um, and then the same thing with, I just want to be average. You can talk about teachers that had high standards and the, the students really worked to try to meet those high standards um, while the teacher was also engaging. Or you can talk about those teachers who just had really low standards and the class was kind of a disaster because I had a couple of teachers like that in high school too, where the bar was way, way down there. And you know, this, it was just kind of a zoo in, the, in those classrooms. Um, so it's up to you and I want you guys to pick the article or the chapter or the essay that really you connected with and you could really see yourself writing about and think about that too. Which one can you think of experiences in your educational past that you can actually write about? All right. So we went over those requirements. So again, you're going to be starting with the summary and then giving me three experiences where you had or did not have that certain trait or concept we're, we're discussing. And then in the conclusion, you're going to be talking about my class and how you're going to try to develop grit or growth mindset or mastery or responsibility or how you're going to try to um, work through some of the challenges that that school will present to you or this semester, this pandemic is presenting to you. Okay. Um, so again, five pages. Don't worry about that. We'll we'll get to that. Okay. We just want to worry about starting to get your ideas out. So if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me via email or text. Also, don't forget about our tutors. They've been posting their hours and their availability for you guys. Take them up on their offer. And now is the time where we're going to be um, using those conferences. Remember in my syllabus, I said you needed to meet two times with a tutor. This is what I'm talking about for essays. And they can help you with any part of the essay process. And I count that as a conference. If you take any part of this essay, even the brainstorm to them and say, how do I get started on this? That counts as your conference. So please try to make an appointment with the tutor at some point between now and, uh, you know, around the 20th, that, that last Friday before the paper due, so that you can have a conference with our tutors and so that they can give you some feedback, okay? If you're able to. If not, we still have a couple more essays where you can get those conferences in, but it's always a good idea to try to get at least one of those done early, okay? There's my email going off. All right, so again, like I said, reach out to me, reach out to the tutors if you have any questions or concerns. And up next, I'm gonna to explain to you how to do the graphic organizer.